I asked you to point out Dominica on a map, could you do it? You'll probably start looking at the Caribbean islands and probably think I'm talking about the Dominican Republic, but you'll actually have to go much farther east to find the tiny nation of less than 100,000 people that actually has one of the top athletes in the world right now. Thayla Fund of Dominica has consistently been among the top triple jumpers in the world for years now and has frequently been the only representative of her country on the global stage in track and field. Dominica has yet to earn a medal of any color when it comes to world championships or Olympics, but considering the progress that Thayla has been making over the past few years, most notably in 2023, Thayla Fond may be the first to break the barrier and finally bring a medal home to the tiny island nation. Let's talk about it. Happy. And I'm really excited. And I always say it's an honor and privilege to represent Dominica. I am the only one here from our country um, competing. So, you know, to have our flag represented in finals is massive for us. Um, and that's like, that's the biggest thing to me is putting us on the map and doing us proud. To this day, many are still probably not too familiar with Thea Lafond. But for those who are, she is, of course, known for the triple jump. But if we go back just a few years to her days in the NCAA, the triple jump may not even have been her best event in terms of accomplishments. First competing at the University of Maryland in 2012, they primarily competed in the high jump and triple jump from week to week, but she did sometimes dabble in the sprints, hurdles, as well as the long jump from time to time. One of her first notable competitions came at the NCAA East prelims where she jumped 12.76 meters in the triple. Yes, it wasn't a very far mark in the grand scheme of things, and she didn't even qualify for NCAA championships. But this performance was arguably a precursor for things to come. Though she was a top 10 ACC performer in her freshman year, both indoors and out, it wasn't until her sophomore year where she arguably had a breakout season. And actually not in the jumps, but in the pentathlon indoors where she won the 2013 ACC indoor championships. That earned her a spot to her first NCAA championships where she finished 10th place overall. Now, she would replicate that pentathlon performance in 2014, once again winning ACCs and finishing 11th at the NCAA Indoor Championships. But throughout the years, Thea did keep consistent with the high jump and triple jump, qualifying for both events at the 2013 Outdoor, 2014 Outdoor, and 2015 Indoor Championships, with her best finish being a fifth place in the high jump at the 2015 NCAA Indoor Championships. But once she graduated from Maryland, Despite the success at everything from the triple, high jump, hurdles, and multis, they had turned her focus solely to the triple jump, which would quickly pay off. In 2016, her first post-collegiate season, she qualified for the Rio Olympic Games, and this was notable in terms of representation for her country. Now, at the start, I noted that Dominica has barely had any representation at major championships. They made their first Olympic appearance in Atlanta in 1996, with six athletes competing, five of them in track and field, and two of them women. In Sydney 2000, four athletes competed with two of them in track and field. But since then, only two athletes total have represented the country at each subsequent Olympic Games. So Thea's qualification to Rio kept the small but mighty presence of Dominica alive at the Olympics. Though she didn't perform to the best of her ability, this was just the start of her career competing at major championships around the world. By the end of 2016, Thea's personal best in the triple jump was 13.41 meters outdoors and 13.61 meters indoors. But as soon as the 2017 season kicked off, she hit marks of 13.89, 13.42, 13.52, and 13.75 meters, all farther than her previous best. But most notably, at the 2017 Penn Relays, she got out to a massive personal best of 14.20 meters, breaking the 14 meter barrier for the first time and catapulting her into a realm she had never hit before. This proved that there was very much a future to not only be competitive with some of the best in the world, but also one day get a shot at the podium. And that actually didn't take too long. After competing at both the 2017 World Championships as well as the 2018 World Indoor Championships, Thea earned her first major medal with a third place at the 2018 Commonwealth Games in Australia. This was a historic moment as she brought home Dominica's first ever medal at the Commonwealth Games in any event. Now, despite only competing at the Olympics since 1996, Dominica had actually been competing at the Commonwealth Games since 1958, and Thea broke the barrier with her bronze medal. Now, I know that many don't look at the Commonwealth Games as a big deal or a major global championships, and even I recently spoke about how competitions like Commonwealth, Pan American Games, they aren't as prestigious as they once were. But performances like these do truly mean a lot 
notably for a small country like Dominica, who have very few opportunities to qualify and send athletes to competitions across the globe. And along with her bronze medal, they had displayed immense consistency all throughout the 2018 season, which included jumping 13.70 meters or farther on five occasions, which included her second 14 meter jump of her career. Yeah, yeah. Young Jumps! Talk a little bit about your coach and what he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, my coach is Young Jumps, aka Aaron Gadsden, but no one knows his name because everyone calls him Young Jumps. We have been out in the world and people come up and point and say Young Jumps, which is hilarious because um, Aaron is clearly absolute at this point. Um, major shout out to him. I mean, he's the the true brains behind this operation and um, we travel everywhere together. He supported me through the entire thing, six years that we've been a uh, coach and athlete dynamic. Um, and that man has a very technical mind and it works really great for technical events. He sees it, he sees the vision. He actually helps me adjust from country to country, um, helps take on a lot of the logistics so I can actually just focus on being a jumper, which is, which is massive. Um, and yeah, I, I don't know, all good things, all good things. I don't know how he does it. I don't know how he sees it. Um, but literally, honestly, some of the best coaching I could say, and of course I'm biased um, in the triple jump, but I'm truly grateful to have him by my side through all of this. 2019 was a bittersweet year as Thea did manage to jump 14.02 meters indoors as well as a personal best of 14.38 meters outdoors. But she unfortunately was unable to compete at the 2019 World Championships in Doha due to a quad injury in her last few days of preparation. This could have been seen as a pretty scary moment as it was already October, less than a year before the Olympic Games, and Thea was progressing at a rapid pace just starting to get competitive with the rest of the world. But that wouldn't stop her though, as she quickly jumped right back into things with a best of 14.33 meters indoors in 2020. Now, the track and field world was put on hold in 2020 due to the pandemic, but that only fueled her even more, and the 2021 Olympic season would truly prove why Thea deserved to be mentioned amongst the best in the world. Throughout 2021, Thea would jump 14 meters a total of 11 times outside of the Olympic Games, Remember, she only broke 14 meters for the first time in 2017, and up to this point, had only hit it eight times total in her career. And yes, I'm fully aware that women were jumping much higher hitting 15 meters, but we just have to keep things in perspective relative to Thea's career leading up to now. Well, when it came to the Tokyo Olympics, everything was going perfect. Thea's last competition was a windy 14.57 meter jump at the Doha Diamond League, so she was poised for something big. In the qualifying rounds in Tokyo, she hit a mark of 14.60 meters on her first attempt, personal best, national record, and the third best mark going into the finals. And even more importantly, this was the first time a woman from Dominica would be represented in an Olympic final in history. The only other person to do it for Dominica was Jerome Romain on the men's side, also in the triple jump, all the way back in 1996. Unfortunately for Thea, tragedy struck as she had her single worst performance of the year, jumping only 12.57 meters and failing to advance up to the top eight competitors. Notably, her third jump was a slight foul, but well over 15 meters. So it's likely she would have at least been in the high 14 meter range, giving her a shot at the podium, but we'll of course never know. Now the pandemic in 2020 brought us back to back global championships, meaning worlds in 2022 and a busy schedule for Thea. So just for a quick summary of the year, she finished fourth place at the World Indoor Championships in Serbia. She won her first Diamond League competition in Rabat, Morocco, finished fifth place at the World Championships in Eugene, again, including a foul that was in the 15 meter range, won her second Commonwealth Games medal, this time an upgrade to silver in Birmingham, and finally became the NACAC champion in the triple jump in the Bahamas. This was all done while jumping 14 meters a total of 20 times, only two of which were wind aided and not even including ancillary jumps. Um, it was an honor. I think that the biggest part and most heartfelt part was the fact that, you know, so many Dominicans from around the world are reaching out to me. I clearly made them really proud and that's really all I aim to do every time I compete on that international stage. Um, and so it was uh, truly a blessing and honor to bring the third Commonwealth medal to Dominica. I now I think I have two out of three of them. Um, and I just really hope to continue making them proud. All this was clearly a sign that her time was coming sooner than later. The consistency was there. She had the Commonwealth Games locked down in terms of getting on the podium and was always in the mix at the Diamond Leagues. It does feel good. I think for a while I've been on a very like strong trajectory in the sport. 
Um, so once I started becoming a person and an athlete that was constantly at those higher levels, I definitely think it, it was a good confidence boost, um, especially since so many of my competitors are European and I'm based in Maryland. So it definitely felt like I belonged here. And I, I'm thankful for that feeling because there was a time where a few years ago, I don't know necessarily you could say I really felt like that. Um, so to kind of be here and to be like so close also, that's what makes it kind of hurt. You know, you work your butt off to be on the stage, to be in the mix. And you're, you're thinking all the shoulda, woulda, couldas. Uh, but at the end of the day, like I'm still always thankful to be here, thankful to make finals. Um, and thank you, thankful to do what I love because I do love the sport. Now, before talking about the World Championships in Budapest, remember, I've been talking about consistency and progression throughout her entire career. Well, in 2023, they had never jumped lower than 14.13 meters. Her trend of getting better year after year wasn't slowing down. And she clearly felt good about what was to come this season as the World Championships approached. I think that now that I know how to get to where I was um, last year, that I'm more eager to get there. Uh, so I think that I'm pretty confident going into, into this year. I'll, I'll lean up a little bit, um, work on that speed, honing on that technique that I know I'm kind of known for at this point, and just go after it and compete. Well, once we got to Worlds in Budapest, Thea was firing on all cylinders. In the qualifying round, she jumped 14.62 meters, a personal best and national record, setting herself up perfectly for the final. I got up, I saw it was past the big queue. I believe I screamed, um, I don't care, I'm going to finals no matter what. Um, and I didn't realize it was a national record until you just pointed it out <laughs> two, two, day, two minutes ago. So uh, um, clearly I'm really happy. And I'm really excited. Now, you may remember in Tokyo 2020, she also jumped a PB in the qualifying rounds, but then did poorly in the final. But that wouldn't be the case here. On her first jump in the final, Thea hit 14.71 meters, another huge personal best that immediately put her right in medal contention. But what eventually happened was this turned out to be one of the best triple jump competitions in world championship history. In that first round, Shanika Ricketts from Jamaica jumped 14.84 meters. Leonis Perez Hernandez from Cuba jumped 14.96 meters, and Marina Beck Romanchuk jumped 15 meters flat. So just after the first round, to get on the podium, you basically had to jump at least 14.9 meters, and that was with the world record holder Yulomar Rojas not even putting down a mark yet. And just for some context, in the 20 year history that the women's triple jump had been contested at the world championships, only three times did it take a minimum of 14.8 meters to get on the podium, 2011, 2003, and 1995. But we were already on pace to surpass that. They had sat in fourth place and then was surpassed in round four by Povea of Cuba, who jumped 14.87 meters. But in what was a masterful response, round five saw Thea jump 14.90 meters, another huge personal best, and just on the cusp of the 15 meter barrier. That also shot her up into bronze medal position entering the final round, which is kind of a scary place to be as everyone was fighting for a podium spot. Well, that six round final completely shifted everything around. Yulimar Rojas went from eighth place to the gold medal with a clutch 15.08 meter jump. Then Shanika Ricketts jumped 14.93 meters to edge the fourth position. Thea was unfortunately unable to respond, only hitting 14.42 meters, meaning she had to settle for fifth place. Once again, so close, but you can only appreciate how competitive this entire field was. Again, prior to this, only three times in history did it take a minimum of 14.8 meters to get on the triple jump podium. But now, jumping anything less than 14.96 meters got you absolutely nothing. But as the season closed out for Thea, despite missing a world championship medal, there was a lot for her to appreciate. Um, I think, you know, it's it was the best season of my life, right? You know, you PB three times, um, and we're just tripping away towards 15. And, you know, we started off kind of like mediocre, but really, you know, built up to worlds. And I think after, it was just kind of like, trying to maintain um, and I think that I've definitely been just like maybe pressing too much and not letting those those, that those jumps come as freely and jumping as free um, and it is you know part of the the challenge of this is staying mentally sharp um, throughout everything and you know still you know aggressively attacking all your jumps but it was a really great season. It really was, and I'm super grateful for the love, the support um, from the friends and family, both in the state and in the Caribbean, and of course, Dominica. Um, but I'm happy with my year, not happy with how it ended, but I digress. Um, we go back and we work harder for next year, as you. So yes, 
Thea has yet to medal at the World Championships or Olympics, but it's clear that she is on a path to do so in the coming years. But even more importantly, she has been representing her country of Dominica to the fullest extent when it comes to competing at the biggest stages. Whether it's winning Commonwealth Games medals, finishing fifth place at Worlds, winning a Diamond League competition, or even fouling at the Olympics, Thea Lafon has been a true ambassador for a tiny nation of Dominica, and if 2023 proved anything, she will be on the podium at the Olympics or World Championships sooner than we think. Thanks for watching. And I also really leaned on, you know, my family, my best friend's family. You know, I think that track and field can be very individualistic. Um, but I have to remember that I do have a team, including my husband slash coach. Um, and those people really help, you know, sometimes keep my mind off the track and sometimes just be like my biggest motivators and believe in me in the days that, you know, maybe my belief in myself is a little shaky. Um, and I think that's really, really important. And it, it takes a village. It really does. It really does.